listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordan. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Goof on Radio. Occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Goof on radio. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. You're listening to Goof on Radio with Rich Jordano. Oh no! All right, come on! I need to come back strong, not with a weak camera. I was on Alien Addict for almost two hours, didn't have one problem. No. Welcome to Goof On, everybody. I'm your host, Rich Giordano. It is Friday, August 19th, 2022. How the hell are you? I'm going to try to do this show as quickly and as painlessly as possible. Because I, uh, you don't want to get sued by Lou. Who's this guy? Hawk Davison with a ca- <coughs> Canadian, I almost said Canadian, $5 super chat. Love who you are. True. That's supposed to be truth, I bet. The R's right next to the T. We're going to make that right. Love who you are. Truth. Hawk Davison. $5. Thank you. Thanks for starting off the show. You are a continuing supporter of Goofon. And also, first Super Chat of the night. That's what we're doing. Thank you, Hawk Davison, with the $5 Canadian Super Chat. Love who you are. Truth. Hey, mucho gusto, generoso. I saw it. Thank you. It was weird. That was a weird one. Tonight, we are going to talk about Lou. Unfortunately, not much. Look, I am uh, new. Well, I mean, I I could have watched a lot of videos. And all I did was read what was going on with this 
thing that Lou and this other guy, we'll get into it, seems that Lou is talking about going after John Greenwald and other platformers, no, journalists. Hey, we're a journalist. I don't know how much of a journalist we are, but I guess we're journal citizen journalist. Is that Hawk again? Ah, mon der ami. Sweet toujours virate. Yeah. Love, my love, always. I don't know what virate means. I don't know. I took French when I was in high school. Mon verre, it's supposed to be mon ami. Je voudrais une pomme de terre. I said I want a potato. That's all I remembered. Thanks, Hawk. That's a $10 Canadian. That's a dime bag right there. You got me a dime bag. Thank you. Hey, from now on, we're going to call them out for what they are. Nickel bags, dime bags. Why not? Hey, I'm not afraid to admit it. That's the difference between us and the other side of ufology. We're not afraid to be who we are. Oh, you should be. Nope, can't do it, won't do it. Not ashamed. See, that's the difference between us and them. And I hate going over this every freaking show. It seems like I have to justify, but I'm just saying it's been a long road, man. <laughs> you know? And it's just very strange how people react when other people don't like what other people are. Like, I could give a shit what they're doing on their shows. Obviously, I don't care. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't watch them. If anybody's talking about me, have fun. I don't see anything here that should be warranted a discussion of a round table for even a minute. Other than the fact that we get to the bottom of shit a lot quicker than most people. And I told you, this is Lou. This is the Lou we all grew up and watched. He's come so far and has done so little. Thank you, Hawk. Mucho gusto, generoso. You know what I mean? Joe K? I saw the yellow and I was like, Hawk. Joe K with the Canadian $15. Rich. This is for your new case. Oh, my God. I, yeah, let me tell you what happened after I do roll call. What I think may why I got sick. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't, I, I don't, well, I can show you with my water bottle. Thanks, Joe. Joe's a continuing supporter of Goofon, just like Hawk. Right? Thanks. Mucho gusto, generoso, senor. Forget about it. We'll give you one of these. <laughs> Yeah. That's a truthology for ufology super chat. Oh. No. Hey. Hawk Davison with ten dollar. He says just respect and love. Just respect. And I don't know. Just respect. I don't need people to love me. I just need people to respect. I don't even need them to respect. What do we mean respect? Respect is earned. It is not given. That's the problem with the other side of ufology. I'm going to carry this thing. You know what I mean? That's, that's the problem. They think they, they deserve respect. For what? what for what? Hey, hey, man, everybody gave Lou... Uh, we'll talk about it in a minute. Thank you, Hawk. Again, mucho gusto, General. We'll give you one of these. Oh! Oh. Thanks, Hawk. It's truthology for you. I'm all over the place tonight. I've got Lou in this corner. I got Pierce in this corner. That was a pretty fun time over there at a Alien Addict. I don't know, man. I'm just happy to be alive today. And you know I don't want to be. Being sick's the worst. And it's not like I was sick, you know, with like a fever or a cold. Man, 
I'll tell you what it was. I was at my parents' house Thursday, and my mom always buys Gatorade, right? And she buys them like the small bottles like this. I think we need a new keyboard. Oh, it didn't get, ah, I can't believe where all that water landed. It landed, I can't, how does that even happen? Look, I gotta show you, ah, oh, I can't. I can't explain it, but the the water leaked in a in a in the only pattern it could have to not get the keys wet. That's brilliant. Oh my god, I can't believe the luck. There's no such thing as luck. Ben? Well, that's right. It's Ben Kenobi. Sound like you have a cold of oh, the desert air. Chris Rogers with the four pound super. Is this show getting started with the super sticker? Don't know what the sticker is, mate, but talking to Ali the last hour, two hour and two hours, I, I'm saying, mate, Chris Rogers, a continuing supporter of Goofon. Thank you very much. <laughs> <coughs> so, back to the Gatorade thing. Oh, uh, well, thank you very much, Hawk. I don't know why. I don't know, but I think uh, something. I know this guy. Where do I know you from? Last the other night? Oh, that was you. Nah, before that, when you first posted something, super chat, I I saw your uh, you had something very familiar about all this. So. The Gatorade was laying down sideways in their refrigerator. And this refrigerator's in the garage. Anyway, it had a little white on the bottom, like inside the bottle. You know, like when you stir something and you don't get all of it stirred up and it settles on the bottom of whatever? Well, that's what it looked like. So I showed my cousin and my mother, father, and they're like, Oh, it's just, uh, you know, when they mixed it, you know, it's just the powder. I'm like, I've been drinking Gatorade my whole life. I've never seen a white substance in any of their bottles, ever, ever. But I drank it because I like Gatorade that much. And I actually said this at the dinner table and I said, I want to die anyway. So I drank it and I drank another half. And the other one that I had, the other half also had the white residue. Well, 12 hours later, I'm I'm starting to feel like my stomach's, you know, weird, like it, getting bloated. And it's like, I'm not hungry, but I'm hungry. It's like, I want to eat, but I can't. I'm not craving food, but I want to eat. So I just drank my meals and, and it made it worse. And then it all came to a head. I don't want to get into all the graphics of what happens when you refund your food. But I'll tell you this much, didn't make it to the toilet, but I made it to the shower. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I made it there. Didn't even get it on my feet. It was like, perfect. And I was so happy I made it in there. It made all that pain worth it. But I threw up that all, all night, all the way until the morning. And I was like, why? Well, I didn't even watch TV. I didn't listen to music. I didn't listen to any. I just couldn't move. And that's what was going on the last time. I did my show. And that's that was about, I don't know how many hours, 12? No, it was 24 hours. No, it couldn't have been. Because I ate that. Oh, that's right. That was the day after. It's 24 hours later, not 12. 12 hours later, I started feeling it. It was 24 hours later is when I threw up, right after that show. Yeah. Not directly after, but several hours later. And I tried to fight it. I didn't want to throw up. You know how you fight it, and then your mouth gets all the moisture in it? And, you, and, you, you know, and you're like, all right, I don't really want to, but I think I need to throw up. To feel better. It, it wound up coming up. I couldn't beat it. 
What did it was I took Alka-Seltzer thinking it was going to make the bloating go away. It progressed everything. And I, I have to admit, has to be one of the best throw-ups I've ever had. I mean, it was coming out like there was a hose inside of me. Have you ever had that before? It's rare to get one of those. It was great. And the good thing about it was no food. Everything digested. I didn't see any granules. Anyway, let's get to the roll call. <laughs> why do I talk about this stuff? I want you guys to know what happened. That's why we're different here. No shame in our game. We are people just like you. I want you to know that. God, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here I'm here just just to to have fun. Really, I want to know what the fuck the truth is. I, I'm sick of this shit. I'm sick of these babies. You get to go sue everybody. Who is he? Saul Rosen, Lou? Hey, it's Lou Ro no, Wait, It's Saul Elizondo. No. Lou Rosenberg. It's now Lou Rosenberg. Oh, hi. Can I speak to my lawyer, please? My name is Lou Rosenberg, damn it. Yes, there was a guy. His name is uh, Goofine. Something or another. Oh, can I take off my shoes? Because my feet hurt. What's my name? I told you. For those of you who are Jerky Boys fans, you would know that is actually very funny. Roll call. I know. I didn't do roll call. Hey, I'm back after a day off. Maybe we'll go a little late tonight. Because there's nobody else on after us. So we'll, maybe we'll do that. I don't know. I'm in a mood. Oh, did I forget that super chat? Hawk, 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 hawk. Come back, come back. Now, now, now. Hawk, hawk. Hello, hello, hello. There it is. You earned mine by... Oh, I did it. Yeah, th thank you. I forgot. Thank you. Thank you. I did. Rebecca Wiles. Ugh, why did I do my... Ugh, sorry. Ugh. Welcome to the show. Helen Crystal Energy, welcome to the show. When I don't think about it, Bob Birkins, welcome to the show. Carl Ann, welcome to the show. Space Exposure, welcome to the show. Sam O, Gufonian Rockstar, welcome to the show. Tony Introvert, welcome to the show. And Samantha Morris the Cat, welcome to the show. Mark D. Truth Searcher, Searcher Joe K, Moon Lickita, welcome to the show. Deborah Orser, welcome to the show. More voices. Uh... Who would you want me to be? You want me to be Ben Kenobi? I could be old Ben. That's old Ben. You have these droids. Oh, come here. Uh, uh, these used to be my droids. <laughs> so stupid. Who was that? A very simple Norman. What was that lady's name? What's up, Nathan? Good to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Den Bob, you too. Welcome to the show. All right, let's just get started. David Wilcox, welcome to the show. Alfie Joe Bob, Johnny Southsider, Lisa M. Andromeda Native, welcome to the show. Toti UK, Brandon Smith, single, single wide samurai with too much game. Welcome to the show, everybody. Ian McFadden. How are you doing there? How are you there? I was watching a movie called Vikings. That movie was so bad. This new movie that came out, like, I don't know, six months ago. It's awful. Whatever it is, it's so bad. I didn't... There was 15 minutes left. I didn't even watch it. I gave it that much disrespect. Because it wasted an hour and 40 minutes of my time and I wasn't and don't want to know how it ends. Because I already know he's going to kill the king. He's going to rule the kingdom. All that stuff. I know. It's it's the same old freaking movie. Can't anybody come out with a new Viking movie? For cripe's sakes. Can we get a new camera? Tomorrow it'll all be fixed. Yeah. Tomorrow it'll all be fixed. Because I'm not using StreamYard anymore. Wait, when's the 23rd will be the last day? So, Tuesday. 
Come on, man. You know what I mean? You got to look at my dirty cuticles just to get a, a focus here. Oh, all right. It's this. There. We'll see if that helps. You know what? Screw it. I think this is the better show anyway. It is. This is better. That's what we're going to do. We'll do it like that. We'll see how long it goes before it comes back. But I'm looking right at you. So, uh, have you guys paid attention to this Lou thing? Hey, <clears throat> excusez-moi. Je voudrais une pomme de terre. Mr. Carfish, 2100. The $2 super chat. That's got super stick up beer. All right, I'll drink your beer, your hops. I appreciate that. Mucho gusto. E generoso, Mr. Catfish 2100. A good friend of the show. Right? Ooh, the silent but deadly one. Ah, oh, you got a good one. Silent but deadly truthology for ufology. Oh, I'm still blinded by a... I'm, I'm leaving it this way. Deal with it. It'll go back to normal. You'll see. Oh, before I get into Bubba Lou. <laughs> what did I call him? Bubba Lou? Uh... Did you um did you see it today? You didn't you didn't see it? I was surprised how many people weren't there. Joe K says, You look like every UFO in Bigfoot video. That's right, we're doing a Bigfoot no what the we're doing a UFO show. We're doing a UFO. We're just doing a show, like every UFO video. Thank you, Joe K. That was actually funny. Mucho gusto generoso. It's true, though. Sorry, Coral, I didn't mean that. <clears throat> it just was in the same screen as mine. I just took it and went, hey, what did I say, huh? You ignore these bullies and they'll stay in focus. That's what you have to do. You have to ignore the bully focus. I don't care anymore. You can't bully me around into thinking, oh, my hands are magical and I'm going to make the show go in focus. All right, so let's go back. We'll go back to Lou in a minute. I tricked you. Thought we were going there. I tricked myself. I just want to talk about this because it's fresh in my mind and we, we were just talking about Travis Walton case with Stephen Pierce. Actually, he doesn't really like to talk about anything that anybody else says or witnessed, which is nice. He just stays in his own lane. It was quite an interesting interview. Um, I was a little shocked, to be honest with you. Shocked that, oh my God, is this guy lying? He doesn't sound like he's telling the truth. The whole time, you know, it was so hard for me to keep a straight face. And I'm sitting there and I want to ask this and I wanted to ask that. But it's Ollie's show and I, I know it would have made Steve mad. And But it was really, he was, he was, what, what is that? He was uh, contradicting himself. I'm like, whoa, wait a second. He just said something that. He didn't say before, but now he's saying it happened. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. I think it had something to do when when Mike took off driving. Well, there was that where he talked about seeing the UFO take off. I don't ever remember anybody ever talking about seeing a white light leave where Travis might have been. And then he said, this was another thing I had no idea. Then he said that they, they, 
cleared out all the trees in the area where the UFO was. What? Because we were talking about how the rings of the trees that were nearest to the UFO all bulged towards the UFO, right? So if this was the UFO and there's a tree here, all these trees here, the closest ones, you know, would have a little bowing of their rings. They wouldn't be circled. They would burr, you know, they would have a little bubble in them. Like, like the tree was being pulled from one side, you know, all the trees are towards the UFO. And he said, no, because we cleared out all the weeds, as he was calling it, made everything clear, clear. And so there's no fires and all that shit. And, uh, the sun hit it there perfectly. And it's because they faced the sun every night it set or rose, whatever. And I'm like, huh? Ha <laughs> ha. I never heard this before. This is amazing. Yeah, I got questions. And next week, Mike Rogers is going on. Oh, that's going to be good. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Alien Addict's getting some great guests. And, uh, yeah, too bad he's not on every night. <laughs> I mean, you get those guests that are real interesting. And then they say some shit you never heard before. And the case is oh, 50 years old. Like, and I never heard this before. I never knew. They cleared the brush and the, the dying trees around that area where the UFO hovered. I said hovered because it's for somebody. Hovered. Hovered. That's how some people say hovered. I just, I was in awe. I, what? Do I have food on me? I feel like I'm, I'm eating my own lips. All right. All right. Let's, um, I think I saw a super chat. Rebecca Wiles. Is that a sailor hat? Oh, that's hot. All right. Yeah. Men like those women in uniform. Why'd you have to go and do that in the middle of the show? I'm working here. Oh, super sticker, $1.49. Thank you very much. There better be more where that came from. No, I'm joking. Thank you very much, Rebecca Wiles, a continuing supporter of Goof on Good Friend of the Show. Grazie. Mucho grazie. Now, you know, how am I supposed to concentrate? <clears throat> That's not right. See, I can't go put on a little outfit like that and come back and look all cutesy. It's just not, it doesn't work with guys. Because men... Put women on a pedestal. For we'll, we'll talk about that some other show. Not here. Morning show. All right. Well, I'm not sure what's going on. Travis Walton case. After all these years, I think it was a hoax. I feel confident in that. But I... I know there's a chance that something real could have happened there, and I'm just... It's just because the way these guys are handling it now. You know, Mike Rogers saying, you know, because he wanted all that money that Travis, I guess, owed him. So he came out and said, yeah, we hoaxed it. Was he lying? Was he telling the truth? That would surely hurt someone's reputation, wouldn't it? The, especially the guy who was there and best friends with Travis, you'd think that would have killed his career. It did not. I think it emboldened it. I think it made him, it made him stronger. I think Travis Walton's getting really good at lying. Or it really happened to the guy. Yeah. I don't. That would make him, and excuse me if I'm offending anybody else. I, I don't mean this with any harm. You know what? I'm not going to say it. Nope. I'm not going to say it. 
I'm taking a higher road for me. For me. That one I'll take. I'll take that one. You understand, right? All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna play a video. You're gonna think it has nothing to do with UFOs or anything, but it is going to, it is going to prove my point. I don't even have to play the video to tell you, but it's, it's interesting what, what society is going through, what we're being told is real and isn't, and I just want to, mm, I don't know if I can play this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can play this. No, I can play it. I just don't know if I want to. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to come back to this and see if I can do it without playing this video on this channel. That may be for the other channel. Yeah, okay, you know, I don't, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it up because I wanted to play it. But if we're talking about defamation of character, first of all, let's pull up defamation of character and see what that means. Even though we know, we know. Uh-huh, let's see what the what the meaning is. The, what is defa defamation? Let's take a look. Oh, you want to see? All right. This is very important that you understand what we're talking about. Defamation, if you can read this, the action of damaging the good reputation of someone, slander or libel. She sued him for defamation. How does it sound? Thank you. Yeah, she's hot. <clears throat> Defamation. Defamation. That's a good song. It's defamation. Huh. That was weird. What time is it? That happened at 33 minutes, give or take. Okay. Something really strange just happened over here, and I can't even talk about it. Just ignore it. Uh, so that's what defamation means. I, that's what it is. The action of damaging the good reputation of someone, slander or libel. So, now, let's go back. Did Lou have a good reputation? Well, everybody starts out with one, right? Mm hmm Why is he going after John Greenwald? Let's pull that up. John Greenwald... You know, this is going to set, if I'm using the correct terminology, set a precedent for anybody, anywhere that is a public figure can sue you for saying something you're not. Like, if somebody... I don't know if somebody said that I'm a, I'm a female, you know, and, and everybody thought I was a female, you know, and then it hurt, could hurt my reputation. You know, people in this field make money, right? So if Lou is making money, he would sue for that money back if he could prove he lost any money because of the defamation of character, which is very hard to prove. 
So if John Greenwald, I'm pulling it up still. Here it is. <clears throat> oh no, I want the John Greenwald one where he's talking. I've got I've got that one. Well, that's my fault. I uh I knew I'd forget that. I forgot it. There here's Stephen Greenstreet. There is no evidence Elizondo was see I guess what this is about is whether or not Lou was the director of A Tip. And Lou tweeted out, I was the director of A Tip. It has been well documented. I have been on the subject of a campaign of deformatory disinformation by multiple parties. Again, my thanks to Todd McMurdy. Hey, McMurdy here. Hey, get McMurdy on the phone. Hey, it's Elizondo. Yeah, he's going off the edge. It's Lou. He's looking for you. Or tell Lou I'm in the can. We did that last time. That would mean you're in the can for two hours. Todd McMurdy, McMurdy says, surely, replying to the Black Vault, John Greenwald Jr., for those of you keeping score. Surely you don't defame Lou Elizondo. It is well documented that he was the director of ATIP and any participation in a plan to cast doubt on that truth is a knowing effort to defame and sow disinformation. It is legally actionable. What is he going to do? Is he going to hurt him? Hey, Lou, why don't you take him out behind the barn? Uh, uh, what should we do? Take him out behind the barn and tell him what the truth is? <laughs> the only guy laughing at his jokes is him. Because he is a joke. And it makes me sad. Very sad to say that. In my opinion, this is where we're going. We're going to sue people because at the time, I think everybody had limited information, right? Nobody knew. And then uh, was it, uh, hold on. Oh, yeah, okay. The, um, hold on. I'm getting several messages. Okay, I see. I'll see Tiger put up a super chat. Oh, Dorothy here. Okay, there's Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Thank you, Dorothy Hawkins with the super dono. Sorry, I got a message that uh, we may have missed a, a super chat. Yeah, computer issues on, it doesn't matter. I'm just getting back to them. Thank you for letting me know, by the way. Appreciate that. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Thank you, thank you. Oh, shoot. Thank you, Dorothy. A continuing supporter of Goofon. Good friend of the show. Ozzy Tiger. I'll see. Ozzy Tiger. That's an $8 super dono from Australia, mate. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And you are a continuing supporter of Goofon. There was yours. There was yours, Dorothy. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. And also Hawk. Hawk. Whoa. $20 Canadian. I know what you've been through. Same here. That's when we have zero friends. Well, I don't have zero friends, but. <clears throat> lost all, have the most precious, my children, money we are making back that was stolen. Stolen? Truth matters. You've once been through hell. Ah. Uh, interesting. Interesting. All right. I'm going to have to read that 
with the lights off and later on after the show because I think there's more meaning to that super chat than what's in there. I think I'm reading it correctly though. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know, man. I don't know what I was just thinking. I just got lost for a second. Thank you very much, Hawk Davison. $20. Appreciate it. That was weird. I went into uh, like a trance for a second. I'm staring at the super chat. And the next thing I know, I'm like, how long have I been sitting here kind of feeling, you know? Anyway, that was weird. Yeah, well, it must be all those cool psychotropic drugs I'm on, huh? Oh, yeah, that guy, he's always on drugs over there. All the time over there. That's why he falls asleep when he's tired. <laughs> hey, Ma, can you get me that guy's video? I want to use it and say it's mine. Yeah, yeah, we'll try that again. Next time, we'll send it to third phase. <laughs> So Lou is now setting a precedent. This is what he's doing. It's the same thing that's happening with Donald Trump right now. Hate to say it. It's true. Same thing. It's the same kind of action. It's all about nothing. It's all just to piss people off. Nobody defamed Lou. Who defamed him? Let me pull up the super... Super chats, God Almighty. Let me pull up the tweets. And, uh, oh, I had it open. Yeah. Yeah, let's go back. Well, Area 503 and a bunch of people are just upset, pissed off. They don't like this shit, you know? I've seen a lot of people like, what the, f what are you doing? Like, here's one from Area 503. Manny, who made who's Lou and who's TTSA? Well, there was that one time Lou told his followers to attack me for putting out Who's Lou. Then they doxed me and my family. And one of them showed up at my family member's house. But I doubt facts like these would convince you. So keep your $100 and buy a effing clue. Oh, that was to this tweet that I saw earlier. Why am I yelling? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's when I wrote, ha ha, Artisan T just got roasted. Damn, 503, taking you out. You got bitch slapped. Yeah. I don't know what the tweet says. I guess it's here. Oh, he says, I'll give you, I'll give $100. This is Ar Artesian Tony. To the first person on UFO Twitter that can convince me that Lou Elizondo has done any harm to them. My guess is that you come to social media to release anger and you are guided to targets by content, by content creators. You know, that's not true. Well, I can say that is not true for Goofon. We have never once directed anybody to do any harm, to do anything like that. Those words... I have never said everybody go, you know, and flag this channel. Go and tell Lou you hate him. I never once did that. Everything I do comes out of my mouth for me. I don't tell people what to do. Nobody wants to be told what to do. All right? I'm not going to do that. If there was something I would want you to do, I would want you to come to Washington with me and go march in Washington like Lou told us to. We can get signs and said, Elizondo told us to, walking here in front of the zoo, you know, something like that. You know, Lou told me to, he said to go to my congressman to, something like that. You know what I mean? We could put signs, wear them. We want to know the truth about UFOs, UAPs. UAUPs. What is the new one? What's the new one they got? What's the U A? What is that? That U P A P one? What is that? They got a new one. Anyway, back to this. So, Doctor Hugh Janus, PhD, says 
he made a distasteful and inappropriate example using bee squitting mother that caused unnecessary harm. Huh? Richard Butt. He provided a hypothetical question to RBS with the intent to evoke an empathetic response. How would you feel if someone said something offensive to you? The point he was making is it sucks when people are constantly attacking you. Instead of empathizing, R took it as an insult. Oh my God. How would you feel if someone was constantly attacking you? Stop lying. It's that simple. You know what I mean? Stop telling us you're something you're not. Try this. Try getting proof. I still don't know where the proof is that he worked as the director of ATIP. I don't know where that evidence is. Sure, we saw, we saw what, a letter from, was it Hal Putoff? What was one of those guys wrote a letter and said, every now and then we give Lou assignments, something like that, right? I've given Lou assignments to go to work at ATIP. It was like Lou was getting the overflow. Like they had two, maybe three people tops working at ATIP maybe. And Lou was the overflow guy. He worked in a remote, you know, he worked at home maybe. Could have worked out of his car. Who knows? But he didn't care about UFOs. He doesn't care about disclosure. Lou is not about any of that stuff. Everything that's going on right now with ufology has to do with some sort of technology, I believe. This is my opinion. I believe there's some technology that has been either enhanced, discovered, or rediscovered. And it's very possible one of those three things, and maybe a fourth element of surprise could be in the mix. I don't know, but I don't think this has to do with UFOs from other, I want it to be, believe me, that would be the dream. But the reality is that it's reality. And uh, the evidence for UFOs is, calm down now. weak sorry if it was strong i would say maybe we're halfway to disclosure but we don't even have any real evidence so the fact that all of this is going on and we haven't seen any evidence to back it up tells me that it ain't happening the way they're telling it it's the only thing that makes sense and like Judge Judy says, if it doesn't make sense, something is wrong. I understood when Lou was at TTSA. He was being paid to do that. He took whatever files he had from ATIP, brought them over. They worked on him. Who the hell knows? That's the story, right? But this guy always said he's not about disclosure. So why do people think Lou gives a shit about UFOs? He doesn't. The only reason we got that office inside the DOD is so we can go to other countries under the, under the government. I was going to say the guise of the government, but I guess it is. It isn't. But And, uh, you know, pick through our, our ad, not our adversaries, but the frig is going on pick through our uh, allies' evidence and see what they have. Because I don't think, and I'm not sure, that whatever's flying around with impunity in restricted airspace, being shot at all the time, according to Jeremy Corbell, we'd be at war. If that shit was happening, we'd be at alien war. It would be happening now. It's not. Look, man, I don't know what to tell you. What makes more sense? We have this technology 
Maybe China has this technology. Maybe it's a drone technology. Maybe it's alien technology. Nobody's talking. Nobody knows. What we do know is that China is really advanced with their drones compared to everybody else in this world and are very advanced with their hypersonic rockets. So where do you think this is heading? This is not good. Of course the government is freaking out over here. Of course they are. They are testing out every freaking rocket we have right now. We are flying all of our shit because I think something is about to happen. I think something, maybe it's that false flag alien invasion. I don't know. But I'm telling you, the reason we're seeing so many things here in the United States lately is probably because we're testing all of our shit out right now, making sure it works if we're going to battle or if we're going to have a false flag, oh, alien invasion. Oh, that works too. We don't know. But aliens, there's no, no evidence of it. Mm -mm. I know, you want to talk about the greys. Hey, we just talked to a guy tonight named Steve Pierce, who was with Travis on the night he got abducted and says it could have been a mind job. It could have been technology that made his mind see shit. He don't know. But he saw it rocking back and forth, you know, as they do. You know, you know, they like a leaf. That's what they do. UFOs, right? It's almost as if Steve Pierce pieced everything together from a bunch of other stories and made it his. I just didn't believe him. I think he was making some shit up. And I'm not going for, I'm not falling for the blurry camera eye trick thing. You go back to normal on your own. I thought I saw a few super chats pop in. Hey, is that Chuck Bam? It is. Nothing's changed. That's right. You've been gone, I don't know, forever. It's still me. I know. Boring. All right, where are we? Hawk? Hawk. $10. Rich, you only speak truth. God bless you. No, alien bless you. Alien bless you. That's the new thing. Alien bless you. That's my God, alien. That's my God, Zitch. He's hiding behind the light over there. Yeah. Well, that's what he looks like, but he'll visit. He's just... Doing his thing. Took a year off. Thank you, Hawk Davison. That's a $10 Canadian super chat. Eggush. That was a good one. Joe K again? $7 from Can Canadian. My Canadians tonight is amazing. Rich, would you breach an NDA if you knew alien spacecraft existed? Even if they locked you, locked you up and threw away the key? How would you release the info? Mm, that's a good one. So I think I could answer that. What I would do, I'd make 50 copies, whatever, put them all in a hard drive and mail them. Half, half of them will go to the news, and then a certain amount will go to people I trust. And then the other one will be sent to Lou Elizondo. Mm -hmm. See if he knows the difference between a real UFO. Now, if I, um, would I breach my NDA? If I knew, okay, here's, here's what I would do. It depends on the evidence. All right, if we're talking about full proof for alien disclosure, if I knew alien spacecraft existed, man, I have to go play that whole thing out by ear. There's a lot of variables that come with this. At first, I would do nothing. 
I wouldn't say anything. But I would make a video and make copies of it and put them somewhere special. Yeah, I don't know, man. They, you know, if they go after your family, I couldn't do that to my family. It depends how, like right now, if I found out, I wouldn't say anything. I'm pretty sure there's a good reason we're not telling the American or any of the public. As a matter of fact, I would make those copies, yeah. And I would send them to a few people about things that I know, if I know anything or have evidence. It depends. I may not do anything. I've thought about this a lot. There's some instances where I would never tell a soul. If it was only me, like if, if the government took me from my home or just paid me a visit, you don't have to take me anywhere. Sorry, I don't want to put the idea I want to go anywhere. You can just come over. And if they showed me and can prove to me that aliens exist somehow, I wouldn't say a word. No way. I couldn't. Well, first of all, nobody would believe it. Secondly, for those who say they believe it, just want to come along for the ride, see where, see where we go. Maybe, you never know. Maybe Rich isn't crazy. I don't know. Every situation's different. But if they came over and said, if you tell anybody, we will take out everybody you know. And I would say, like who? <laughs> oh, my God. Scary world. You don't want to have that on your mind. It's a good question. Good super chat. Thank you. Joe K coming in strong. Real strong. Tough answer. Um, but, you know, what's going on here is uh, Joe K 279 Canadian coin says, what if you had boots on the ground? Crash retrieval? Yeah, I wouldn't tell anybody. I just won't. There's a reason for it. Look, the older, like the younger me, when I first got into this field, it's like, I'll tell everybody. Now I don't want to tell anybody because we're not ready. You're ready. I'm ready. Gigi Abby Lynn is ready. Samo, Gufonian Rockstar, ready. Right? Ms. DJ DJ, definitely ready. But you know who isn't ready? The rest of the world. They can't handle this, man. They've been told. Well, they haven't been, but people who don't research this shit, don't read into it, don't know. And they will freak, the, they will freak out when the reality hits the fan. You and I, we're still going to shit in the fan, but at least we'll be a little more controlled shit. I'm telling you, the day that happens, I will go numb. I'm telling you, I, I don't know how I'm going to act if that day ever occurred. I try reliving it, you know, try to imagine it just like I do my, you know, when I do my uh, law of attraction. I try to create that reality. And when I imagine it happening, it's a beautiful thing. But it's also extremely scary to know that there's beings floating right over me in a ship that's the size of a mountain. There you go, Joe. Thank you. Good, good super chat. Mucho gusto generoso, by the way. Lisa Bowden with the $5 super chat. Breach that NDA. Wave goodbye. Look at Julian Assange. Just told the truth. Yeah. He's, he's not living a, 
a great life. Is he? Or is he now? Did he did he get taken home? Is he fine now? I know he spent a decade running, right? Or living in that. I don't want to live like that. Besides, Bob Lazar came out. And what happened? What happened? Did, did we flip out over it? He's, Bob Lazar talked about working on alien spaceships. And guess what? Crickets. Crickets. That's what I'm telling you. If aliens showed up and disclosure, we are, oh, we're ready for disclosure. We are not even ready for Bob Lazar. And that's why nothing happened for 30 freaking years. But they brought him out of the woodwork because everybody's talking about UFOs now. TTSA and this and that. We've got all these great things. I can imagine Jeremy Corbell selling that freaking movie to Bob Lazar. This is going to be a huge story. You don't understand, Bob. Bob, you are the essential guide. You are the fit. You are the puzzle. Just, I am telling you from the bottom of my palm sweat, you are everything to us in ufology. All right, stop it. You're making me sick. Next thing you know, you're about to get on your knees and suck my hello. I didn't know you could read minds too, Bob. It's Mr. Lazar. God, I have a great joke and I can't say it. Thanks, YouTube. But I can't believe this. I got, I got a little off track, but not really. Thank you, Lisa. I don't know. It may sound it may sound easy to breach that MDA, but it's not. Whatever ha does anybody do we know if anybody's ever done that? Breached their NDA and got killed or went missing? Do we know of anybody like that? Oh, no, I got to get this shit off my mouth. I've been playing with it for an hour. I don't know. It feels like my skin's coming off. All right. See, every time I move, another piece moves. Ooh, I don't understand. I washed my face. I used a nice towel. All right, I have to go here. So hold on. Let me go here. All right, here we are. Somebody was asking, thanks again, Lisa. Somebody was asking, random average guy, and this is a good question, I guess. So where does all of this Lou didn't or did run a tip come from? It comes from the DOD releasing conflicting statements about Lou's involvement on multiple occasions. We all agree that it's very odd the DOD has never definitely stated a yes or no answer on his involvement with ATIP. Stephen Greenstreet then says, there is no evidence Elizondo was the director of an official Pentagon program called ATIP. There is also no evidence an official Pentagon program called ATIP beyond being just a nickname for OSAP. That's right. That's right. Oh my God, what is this about? What's this? Did we watch this? Oh, I see. Oh, watch this.
And that's what they did. They made it very confusing. So that's what I was saying before. With all this information going back and forth and it's, contradict it's contradicting the previous statement and you're like, well, what do you believe? Was ATIP a real thing or was it really just a nickname of OSAP? Because that's what everybody said, right? It's just a nickname. There's no papers. Lou himself said that when you start a program like this, there is no paperwork. And when you close an agency like ATIP, there is no paperwork. I am not a crook. I am not a liar. Yeah, come on, Lou. All right, maybe you're not a liar. Maybe he's not a liar. Script reader? Mm -hmm. Come on, Lou. Why don't you come on over on the show? Just email me, goofonradio at gmail.com. Whatever you want to do, we'll talk about it. No? Uh, yeah. Mm. Why would I want to go on your show? You said I flattened my wife. Come on. Can't take a joke. You never sat in the front row of a... Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't laugh. So you've never been to a comedy store. That's true. I believe that. I believe that. My bad, Mr. Elizondo. My bad. I'm sorry I was using comedy to break up the, you know, the monotonous lying that I keep seeing from your region over there. Excuse me for being a little sensitive, Lou Rosenberg. I've got my shoes and I've got my army jacket because I was in the Marines, damn it. Were you in the army or the, re the Marines, Lou? Yes. You can't be in both of them. I was, damn it. Lou Rosenberg, everybody. He can do it all and nothing at the same time. Here's a guy who's spinning his wheels and getting nowhere. That that makes sense, actually. Don't! That's interesting. It is. It's interesting. My fault, I guess. I don't see how. This is why we're leaving. This is why we say goodbye to StreamYard. Oh, I wasted all that time. But I got to play it because it was worth it. I know you saw it. Millions of pages of government documents obtained via the Freedom of Information Act. When he read the December 2017 UFO stories, he immediately noticed some strange discrepancies. Well, right off the bat, I noticed that the reporting from Brian Bender at Politico and uh, Leslie Kane, Ralph Blumenthal, and Helene Cooper at New York Times had a slightly different program name. Politico says Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program. New York Times reports Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Uh, why was there that difference? The amount of sources that both news media outlets had were very, very small and likely the same. So how is it that the reporting was different? 
as the reporting went on, it got worse. I mean, there were like seven or eight. I, I, I lined them all up with dates and who the, the media outlet was. And there were like seven different variations of what ATIP even stood for. And to an, an investigator or a researcher like myself, and there's a lot of other people out there, if you're looking into something, you need to have the name right. Because if you don't have the name right, how are you going to find anything? Right. Because when you submit a Freedom of Information Act request, you have to be specific with the government what you're... Yeah, and that's why they do that. They change the names and make them long acronyms with similar letters like R, N, M, N, M, O, 8. Yeah, there. This this is really strange for Lou to go after John Greenwald. If he see, that's the whole thing. I need to find that uh, original link, and I just can't. And I don't know why the sound stops working periodically. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. Let's go to. Uh, let's check out here. No. Nope. No. Hmm. It's weird. Oh, here it is. Like, huh? All right. <clears throat> I'm on John's thing here. I want to see it. If he's got it up. Yeah, that girl's amazing. Oh, yeah, John Greenwald's video was awesome. Do you feel, he says, we should be able to question the claims of a former U.S. government employee using as much evidence as we can and properly labeling opinions when they are? Me too. But some rather label it defamation and RT there and attorney oh and they're right an attorney I guess right and retain their attorney is that what that means RT to scare anyone who does that's what he's doing he's trying to scare us and if he thinks he's going to get money out of somebody you Lou needs to prove that if John Greenwald was defaming him he would have to prove how it cost Lou money and how it defamed him First of all, you're going to have to go through your NDA, right? He's going to have to speak and say things that he's not allowed to. Oh, my God, the NDA comes again. That's why I don't know why we can't have an opinion as the information comes out. Because that's what we were getting. We, were, we weren't getting all of the information at once. We had to wait for, you know, FOIA requests to come through because the government wasn't releasing everything. <coughs> Unbelievable. I was the director of ATIP. This is August 18th, last week. A few days ago. Yesterday! Tells you where I've been the last few days. It has been well documented. I have been the subject of a campaign of defamatory disinformation by multiple parties. I want to know what we said. I said, what did I say? I don't believe him. I said, I don't know what to believe. I said a lot of stuff. I said, I don't believe him. Uh, he's a liar. Get the F out of ufology. We don't know if he worked at ATIP or OSAP. Apparently, he never worked at OSAP, and ATIP was just a nickname for OSAP, so Lou worked for OSAP. It's very confusing. And then what happened? Susan Koff, what did she do? Says that Lou never worked at ATIP. Remember that? Isn't that what happened? I know John Greenwald's got a video up today. I'm going to pull it up and just play a few clips of this because I listened to this whole three hours. 
and I know where to go. This was unbelievable to me. Oh, I hate my fingers. Black Vault. Here we go. Deep dive into Luis Elizondo's DOD Inspector General yesterday. OSAP was in need of specific counterintelligence and security support and that my background as a credentialed CIA special agent This is amazing. I can't play all this. was a necessary skill set. Here's the where the Furthermore, complaint begins. They indicated they required the required they required I give permission for DOD hotline to release my identity outside the DOD hotline on a need to know basis. All right. So he wasn't John's okay to make with the us. As long as we give the, the link, uh, not checked was, I don't give permission, meaning a anonymous complaint going through these pages. That's you can see it. Mr. Luis Daniel Elizondo. That's it. Uh, this is something that I want to point out that I don't believe has been addressed. Now, I know that he's come out since, I believe, in podcasts and said that he was a government contractor. Uh, however, the employee status, you would think that from the DOD, he would be a retiree or a contractor employee. You can see those two options here. When it's he hard filed to see. this, I don't believe it was public knowledge. I did not try and figure out that timeline because it's irrelevant. But regardless, for quite some time, we just thought he was a retiree. He talked about living in a trailer in Southern California for quite some time and then moved to another state. It came out later that he was working as a government contractor and maintained his uh, security clearance. So whichever one is right, neither one was checked. You can see here he right. checked other so I'm not entirely sure why he would do that, what that means, uh, but you, he was willing to be interviewed. And here's where we're going to start breaking down the people. These are the allegations that Luis Elizondo is making and who he is making them to. First up on the list on the form, Gary Reed. Now, if you don't know who Gary Reed is, he might ring a bell. You can see here is a retiree. I don't believe that was accurate either. Uh, a civilian employee likely was accurate. Uh, worked for the USD yeah. um, Office of the Other Under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, now named. An you guys pretty much know all this stuff. I'm thinking if I need to even go through any of this and said just talk about it because it's not that hard to remember everything here. If I just play two seconds here and two seconds there, obviously, you know. You remember this when this was put out, the the Inspector General complaint. This isn't has anything to do with uh, what we were just talking about, but if you ever if you read this down here, it says John, in John's description, it says for nearly five years we've heard the stories of Luis Elizondo after retiring as a senior intelligence officer within the Department of Defense and being a former counterintelligence agent within the U.S. Army. His efforts and his story have played a crucial role in the change in global, con in global conversation about UFOs. His actions and his story may have even played a role in motivating Congress to create legislation and pursue answers to a pressing mystery. But according to Elizondo, his actions, his actions didn't come without a cost. According to him, he was faced with retribution, false information to the public, abuse by government authority, and the illegal destruction of information all by the people within the very department he once worked for. So to clear his name, he filed a, uh, what is that? A 64-page complaint to the Department of Defense Office of the Inspector General. Uh, then John says, this video is a deep dive into that very document as published in redacted form by the New York Post. What's in it? What's exact, what exactly is being alleged? And does the evidence that we can get access to support or contradict the rather pointed allegations about certain individuals? So I tell you what, that is a lot of video to play three hours worth of John going through all that. There's no way I can do all that. 
I just got to tell you to watch this video. I'll put the link in the description. But, you know, just to hear a few of these things will refresh your memory. Susan Goff, this is one of the most interesting segments here. How do you say her name? Susan Goff? Susan Go? So let's get into now his complaint and the meat of it. This, as he stated, was first the chronological outline proving what he has essentially claimed. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is him putting on paper what he has conveyed, sometimes in part, but there's also a lot of new information as well, but sometimes in part in podcasts and interviews and so on. This doesn't necessarily lock it into stone. Now, I know some of you may cringe at me saying that. Thank you, Hawk Davis. One of the biggest reactions I saw when people read through this chronology was, aha, see, I told you. You know, this is he's telling the truth. Well, no, this is just putting into writing with some names that have been um, uh, stated here with also other names being redacted. My question is, where are those other names if they can essentially back up what Mr. Elizondo is stating? I know some people fire back with Harry Reid, but Harry Reid stated he was never briefed ever on ATIP. So, oh yeah, Harry Reid, that's right, Harry Reid, Hawk Davidson. Thank you. What if the close truth is biblical? Hey, why not? Biblical to me is alien. Our it, Hawk Davidson again, five dollar Canadian. Our files, when I was in, wait, why? Was about. Our files when I was in school was about the Bible, Christ, end times. I didn't believe before that. Are you writing it all out here? <laughs> Wait. Oh, it's space exposure. Okay. Thank you, Hawk. <laughs> Greenwald does good work. Lou just fears scrutiny. You know what? Space exposure, that's 100 million percent true. But why put it out there that you're going to sue somebody I don't think Lou's going to win. Greenwald does really good work. You know, when you don't put a video out every day, shit, if I had two, three days to put together videos, which we could, I mean, my God, I should be. I should be. No, I really should. Space exposure, thank you. $5 super chat. Greenwald is, uh, he's one of the good guys. Hawk again with the $5 pinata. Lou is doing what he's paid to do. Backed by DOT government. It's all a tax paid lie. It is, I think, in my opinion. I think it is. We always talk, we talk about this all the time. We talk about it all the time here. And we're stuck in the same place. And every time we go back and forth with this guy, it doesn't make sense. Hawk! $10 Canadian. Lou is paid by government intel to this day. Why? Because he's an anti-government, government, government, paid, paid by his enemies. He's, he's, dive deeper, deeper. They are, are, we're, we are researching deep, deep. Iraq was the game, game, game. They are, 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 we, we were researching deep, deep, deep. Iraq, Iraq was the game, game, game. See, I can do it. $10 echo chamber. That was a $10 echo chamber super chat. There we go, man. I just created a new super chat, the echo chamber. Thank you. The echo chambers are only $10 and higher. I don't do the echo chamber just for any old super chat. They're special. Oh, no, I have an idea. I have an idea. There's a video out there. Maybe you sent it to me where an Iraqi was talking about seeing the American drones in 93, mind you, seeing an American drone. It looked American because he said it had the sticker on it. Looked like USA. Stopping and taking off at hypersonic speeds without any revving up or build up. Hmm? Oh, mm -hmm. 
and no sound. That's not a drone. That's ancient alien technology being used in the Iraqi war. I don't know. I'm just spitballing. Thank you, Hawk Davison. I want to know what you You probably saw what I just said that was seen. Right? Right? Thanks, Hawk. Hey, Hawk. All this tonight, we got to give you a little special. How about this? We'll, we'll take you on a, on a ride. See if this works. I'll be watching from here. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Seatbelt. Nice. You grabbed it. All right. Hold on. Here we go. You got it. I'm getting it now. Thank you for the deposit. Thank you. All right. Take me back. Take me back. Thank you. Whoa. Whoa. All right. I think we, we pretty much, we, what are we going to do? Keep talking about this guy? What is John going to do? The poor guy's just trying to, you know, do his job and do a little research. And Lou doesn't like the scrutiny. You guys are correct. Anytime somebody gets a little bit more scrutiny or gets a little close, they got to do something like this. What did we, what were we talking about the last time? When Lou said, the felon five, right? And before that, right before that, Lou was going off. Lou was just acting weird earlier in the year. Talking about sock accounts, not sock puppets. Anybody who says sock puppet, don't. It's not what it is. It's a sock account. Somebody sent me an email. No, it was a it was a Twitter that I I got blocked on. I can't get to it. And they said, "I know who you are and I know what faction you worked in." And that's all it said. I know who you are and know what faction you worked in. Isn't faction like uh, like military or something? Me? Man, I wish. I wish I had that kind of brother in. Yeah. Can't always get what you want. You can't always get what you want. <laughs> oh, my God. I never tried that before. That was funny. Oh, no, no. You can't always get what you want. Oh, that's hard. A shoe be shattered. Remember that? Remember that song? Man, that was when the Stones were good. I, and I hate the Stones, but they were good. <laughs> Weren't they? The Stones sucked, but they were good. Just like Kiss sucks, but they were good in concert. I can't stand KISS. It's got to be one of the worst bands in the history of bands. But do they put on a hell of a show? And I saw them on their, uh, when they came back out of retirement, when they lost the makeup. And then they put the makeup back on. Yeah. All right. What the fuck? What the fuck? All right, this is amazing. And I'm going to show you this 
right now what is happening in Canada. My, uh, my generous friends in Canada tonight, I'm going to play this. I know nothing about your politics, but I saw that this was very interesting today. Watch this. This is amazing. Guess what? It's coming to America. Coming to a corner near you. Catch me on Goof on Lives. What's tomorrow? Saturday? No, I don't want to do it tomorrow. Sunday. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Who's this guy? Mr. DB Cooper 77. I believe. MX, where is that? Where is Mexico? Well, that, that looks because of the color. It's, it's a $2 super chat, right? That's Mexico, I believe. You do have that type of brethren. Brethren, not brotherin. I said brotherin. Yeah, yeah. Hey, good to see you, man. Haven't seen you in a while. Been a few months. Hope you're okay. Hawk Davison, I am true. Are they playing with you too? I think so. I think so. I think they've corrupted my brain. Come on, man. I'm fine. I'm down. I'm good. I'm ready. Ready and steady. There's no shake in these hands. Sorry. This hand. <laughs> you know, my hands never shake, even when I'm freezing. It's weird. See? Like a rock. Thanks, Hawk. Multiple tonight. Very generous. Oh, yeah. Is this... What is this? Mr. D.B. Cooper with $220. 20. It's Mexican. Don't get slappy, happy, jappy. No, I know. I know. Thank you, though, bro. I mean, seriously. Good timing. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. All you've done for me. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have that beautiful camera. The P900, which I still use uh, weekly, by the way. Freaking awesome. I take it to the beach with me. I got so many cool pictures. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Talk about mucho gusto generoso. And here's Mike Johnson with the $7 Canadian Super Dono. There's no super chat. With There's no comment. I almost had it. No comment. No sticker. Pure love. Mike Johnson, good friend of the show as well. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate that. A little celebration is in order. I always like to. I'm going to take you to the. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to go to the cloning center. Come on, Cloning Center is a nice place. Not me. Do it again. It didn't take. <clears throat> oh, whoa. Whoa, this is good. We're working. Nice. You got it. Thanks, Mike. Take that one right there, bro. There you go. You got it? That was you. How'd you know you chose yourself? Hey, hey, 
What's this? Who's this guy? Mr. D.B. Cooper. Oh, shit cycles. Oh, it's $50. Mucho gusto. Isn't it? That's 50? That's 50, right? Because it's the same. Or is that 100? That looks like 100. What is it? So if 200 is 20, 400 is 40. Okay, so it is 50. It's 50. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man, I'm color coding this boy. I can't tell what country that is. It's Mexico. I don't know their colors. Thank you very much, man. Mr. D.B. Cooper. Throwing it down. Making it rain. You know what? Take you on a ride. Come on. Let's go to the other one. This is the upgrade. Nice, right? These are nearly completed. I take the fourth one from the right. Yeah, she's a good one. She's cute. Thank you. Hey, what time? We got 20 minutes. So yeah, scared of Canada right now. You should be. All right, let's go down the road here. So they, they think they figured out, nah, frick it, do it tomorrow. Here's Mick West talking about the Calvine UFO. I don't know if you saw this, but I'm going to show it to you. Where the friggonometry? A reflection is not always a reflection. What is this? He says a reflection is not always a mirror image. An image in a mirror isn't the same as just flipping a photo up, down, left, or right. The world is three-dimensional. Amazing. Debunked. Debunked. Calvine's debunked. You've seen it here first. How many people remember a year ago and 48 hours? I want to have a moment of silence for somebody's career coming to a screeching halt. Or has it? Dun, dun, dun. Where's Anjali? Do you remember this lady? She came out in front of the Capitol to a crowd of zero. And they thought she was a joke when she said, There's aliens in the mountain. And she said she was going to take us there at the end of the year. Year, year. But did she? No. Why? Because she's a lady. No, because she's a hoaxer. A lady hoaxer. her. I can't do any voices. My voice still sucks. Yes, Anjali's still looking for that friend with a fellow trying to make ends meet on a story told by millions and no evidence. She tried to come. Is that why she has that around her throat? She tried to take herself out before she was out. Wait, that, that doesn't sound right. She tried to take herself out when she went out? Uh, next story. Alien invasion is a favorite topic. Why, why is this here? Oh my God, no. Oh my God, I've got to talk about this. So Fat Tony and uh, his girlfriend Butch, whatever she is, you know, S4 character, the guy who faked the sighting to make believe it was his, is now trying to be boots on the ground credible. Have you heard this? They're trying to go boots on the ground. It is so adorable. It is the most adorable thing. We're going to go try to go be boots on the ground because everybody says you're nothing without being boots on the ground. I just don't have time for hoaxers. Hoaxers and liars of that caliber have no business in ufology. You know it and you still support the fucking guy. Why? 
Why? Because he's a nice guy. Oh, my God. Oh, Rich, just lay off him. Let him go. Just let him have it. What do you care? I can't believe you just said that to me. What do I care? Why can't you just let people be rich? If they can do that somewhere else. You know what I mean? I don't want this freaking liar back out, making believe he's capturing shit, trying to fake us out again. He won't get away with it. We're gonna go and gonna go investigate stuff because we're boots on the ground. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, Fat Tony. Keep telling yourself that. Oh, Coral's not here. Holy shit. All right, we've got a few super chats here. What is this? Who's this guy again? No, I'm, I don't have time for them. Mm -mm. They will not. They will not violate ufology. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Anything that gets posted over there will be looked at with scrutiny like never before. Oh, well, over here, we're going to point the... Oh, look, it, uh, oh, it's not a satellite. It's powering up. Look at that, Butch. Uh. Oh, God, I can't stand that guy. And we got all the video. And we got all this is real. It's real. It's really mine. Anybody who says real more than twice... I can, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm ruining a good time. Mr. D.B. Cooper, 7-7. Seven, seven. That is a $20. I'm stuck in the peso, oh, peso multiverse, bro. Oh, these are pesos. Okay. Oh, no. Here comes the next one. Watch. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What the frig? Mike, are you sure? Was that an accident? Home of the Looney and Toonie. Oh, that's good. I like the Looney and Toonie. I have to set up that PayPal account one day. So it takes five seconds. All you need is an email address and a PayPal app. Thanks, Mike. Mike, are you sure? Email me if that was by app. Because usually you're six ninety nine. So I understand sometimes those fingers can do that. It's okay. Nobody has to know. Just let me know later. And thank you, by the way, Mike. Unbelievable, Mr. D.B. Cooper. What's up, Jeanette Bombach? How you doing? Stuart? What's up, Claude? Brandon? Props with a Z. Is that views? That's views, I can tell it is. Next one. Well, next one. It's all good. Oh, Mike. All right, Mike, then... You know, let me know. Mr. D.B. Cooper, next one, that's that's uh, pesos, but that's a $10 super chat. Uh, we'll, we'll take this one down the road. Uh, hold on. Where are we going? No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We can't get out of here for a few more seconds. Oh, this sucks. We're stuck in uh, mainstream media verse. Damn it. Ma! Thank you. She can take care of that shit sometimes. Thanks, Mr. D.B. Cooper. Sorry about that, sir. Trying my, trying my hardest. Mucho gusto generoso. Mr. D.B. Cooper, so. <laughs> oh, hold on. Somebody just... Somebody just messaged me. What is this? Did I get the thunderstorms? What? Yes. Uh-oh. Bigger dick size. I keep getting these every day. Mike Johnson, I can do yellow too, Mr. DB Cooper 77. That's a $14 Canadian super chat, Mike. Mike. You don't want to go there. You don't want to challenge Mr. D.B. Cooper to this. You don't want to do that. 
I've seen it. I've seen it many times. It's not going to come out well. Uh -uh. Please don't. Don't. All right. Let me go back into the uh, work mode here. Thank you, Mike Johnson. You're, you guys are uh, making it rain like we're on Mars or something. Look at this guy. This guy still can't stop. Look at him. Isn't that Fessler? That is. He's took his mask off. He's not wearing his face diaper. Unbelievable. I can't believe they're actually going to make believe they're UFO researchers. We're going to go out there. We're going to show people. We're going to get a street cred. That's what we're going to get. Staten Island street cred. Hey, yo, Vinny. Vinny. You see any goombas over there? Yeah. Over in the sky, I'm talking about. You know what I mean. Where's Gina? Gina Ariola, where are you, sweetheart? Yeah, she's going to come with me. We're going to go on the UFO. Me and my friend Butch over here. Uh, we got a we got a new uh, way to to get around. You see, we we take other people's cars, and we use their gas, and we use their wheels, and then we bring the car back and we say, "Hey, we didn't steal it. We just borrowed it." That's all we did, and that's all we're doing. We're gonna go boots on the ground with somebody else's car, somebody else's camera equipment. Hey, I'm gonna have to get new friends after this one. That good. Unbelievable. What are they doing over in Staten Island? Huh? Yeah. I'm from Staten Island. They can't, they don't represent no Staten Islanders. Actually, they do. <laughs> I, actually, they do. Sadly, Staten Islanders have been known to be bullshitters. <laughs> hey. Hey, this isn't funny. What the f- Hava hava. <laughs> hava hava. And then. Hoja wuzi. Hoja juzi. It's Adam Sandler. Hoja wuzi wuzi. Mr. D.B. Cooper. I don't even have words. You know what they should have done? Sent a poet. <laughs> I was going to hurt myself. Thank you very much. That's like a million dollars over it. It's like uh, unbelievable. What are you doing? Crazy. I told you, Mike. I told you. He doesn't. He doesn't. I told you. T.B. Cooper, man. Thank you. We got to take him on a ride. I don't know where to. Oh, here we go. Mr. D.B. Cooper, this is for you. Hold on, this is like a, this may not work right. Let's try this. For you, D.B. Cooper. It might cut out, I'm not sure. 40.
Thank you, Mr. D.B. Cooper. Mucho gusto, generoso. Good friend of the show. Huge supporter. Appreciate it. Come on, anybody puts up a thousand? You give them all the time they need for celebration. It just looks so cool. Sorry, it just looks cool. <laughs> I've never seen a thousand. I know it's a hundred, but still, it looks cool as hell. What did he fake? He didn't fake. What he did, he said he saw something in the sky that looked like a triangle. Three dots, maybe four. He missed it. He couldn't get it on video. So he borrowed a video that somebody took 10 years ago and then talked about it when he played the video like it was his and said, here's where I zoomed in on it. This is where it turned on me. Like, and it was someone else's video. He didn't think anybody would notice. Then he says, I, I didn't really, uh, I just borrowed it, you know, to explain. But that's not what you said. He said he was using the video. He said that was his video. And then he said, I was just using it for as an example. But you didn't come out and say it was an example. That's why you apologize to everybody that you lied. It's so easy we forget. Can I put that back up? Thank you. We're going to end the show on that high note. Thank you, Mr. D.B. Cooper. Seriously. Everybody. I mean, Mike Johnson. I mean, uh, everybody. Where is everybody? One big happy family. Here they are. Look. Mike Johnson, D.B. Cooper. I don't care. I'll do it again. Mike Johnson, Hawk Davison, starting it off sweet ass hot right out of the grill tonight. Jesus Hawk, Space Exposure, thank you. Lisa Bowden, Dorothy Hawkins, Ozzy Tiger, Rebecca Wiles, Joe K, Mr. Catfish, Chris Rogers, Joe K, and Bernie Muro. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, the, that was a we, tonight was weird. Tonight was really weird. It was. Oh wait, there's more. Another one. Hold on. Coral must have had issues with her computer. Joe K. It was strange for S4 to do that. I know. And then gets mad at me for no reason. The weirdest thing you ever seen. Thank you, Joe K. Continuing supporter of Goofon, $2.79. Thank you. Alien bless you. Alien bless you all. So because I'm not working out tonight, not working out tonight. I'm going to see if I have any overtime bonus stuff for you now. I'm not I'm not going to end the show right now. I'm just continuing on, see if I have anything. And I do have a lot of stuff. You know what? We'll just keep going. We'll just keep going. So check this out. Jeremy Corbell. We might as well. We haven't even brought up her name yet. For sure. These are not ours. The 2019 swarms. These are not our assets. Reposted. Zeta Reticuli. Instagram, Joe Rogan, Bob Lazar, UFOs regularly spotted in restricted U.S. airspace. Joe Rogan experience, Spotify, what the frick? Are not, for sure, these are not ours. The 2019 swarms, 
they're for not sure. our assets. For sure. For sure. Like to current day, today, still that is the under today. It's not he's got vocal fry. If anybody has vocal fry, that's me. That's when people from California talk like this. They go, Oh, that's cool. You know, and their voice sounds like it's frying. That's what he just did. Sure. For sure. Like to current day. To current day. Today. Today. So a California dude, man. Still, that is the understanding that they are not ours. So, like, who's the f are they? Looks like airplanes to me. And it was in Get the ready for of a the surprise. where it caught my attention to where this is technology that doesn't even exist. This is technology that doesn't even exist. Let's see if I am I getting closer to the to the voice. I think I'm getting my it attention down. to where this is technology that doesn't even exist. This is technology that doesn't even exist. No, I'm not there yet. It's hard. It's going to take me another year. <clears throat> I'm close, but there's a way he speaks. ...of the reactor working, where it caught my attention to where this is technology that doesn't even exist. This is technology that doesn't even exist. This is technology that's beyond our recognition. Can't do it. I don't have my voice today, though. That's okay. I know I said it three times. As Nick Pope said, the debate is over. The Calvine UFO photo has become a skeptic versus believer dogfight. Four hours left in this survey. I invite you to weigh in if you haven't already. Let's weigh the dogs. Who cares? So, Moonlicked, <clears throat> who's a, a big fan of the show, and a lot of us here who believe in our narrative, if I could speak, says when bringing into question the legitimacy of another's deity it is proper to do so with the humbleness of mind and heart gather ye round louise for daily inspiration and guidance yahoo lou elizondo well golly sergeant carter pile well surprise 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 i'm in the army sergeant carter Pyle, this is Louis Elizondo. Hi, sir. I heard you seen them UFOs. Pyle. I mean, look at him. That's a face only a mother could hate. I can't do it. Yeah, you got to say goodbye to that. <sighs> Leaked cockpit footage. Oh, this is the fake, isn't this? This is fake, right? Leaked cockpit footage. It's fake, right? 18 seconds. Ready? Ugh. Oh. Dude, just turn your plane around. The fuck twisting your head for? You have a jet. Turn the jet. That's how you know this is bullshit. You turn your jet. I gotta stay in formation, Sergeant Carter. Elizondo said you gotta get it right. Do you feel we should be able to question the claims of a former U.S. government employee using as much evidence as we can? and properly labeling opinions when they are? Me too. Oh, we read that already. Damn it. I think they... No. Was this... No, I can't show that. No. Because then I would really... I would really be hated. All right, let's let's Travis Walton lied. 
I was going to play this earlier, but here's a video from the old Dark Sky Files. Rich, I'll play this for a second. sure the national enquirer has there's a reason this wasn't allowed on youtube right well his whole channel was taken down i've played this before and not to tell anybody where i was going period well naturally i told my wife and uh picked up my portable equipment and left for the hotel a lie detector is used to reveal whether a person is telling the truth by measuring pulse rate respiration and blood pressure some experts however doubt its reliability but after two hours of questioning and recording the reactions mccarthy thought he had the answer when i completed my examinations after reading my charts i rendered the opinion to the reporters from the national Enquirer that uh, the charts were deceptive and that in my opinion he was uh, attempting to perpetrate a ufo hoax did you see the micro expression? He was disgusted. Watch. In my opinion, he was uh, attempting to perpetrate a UFO hoax. See it? The disgust? It's easy, right? Hey, no. How do you get this bigger? There it is. That's the disgust on his face. Here it comes. Attempting to perpetrate a UFO hoax. And a hard swallow. Wow, he was really mad. And he was uh, attempting to perpetrate a UFO hoax. Watch the swallow. Wow, the lid blew off. The That's room. hard to do. Uh, I thought his brother Dwayne was going to throw me off the balcony. So Travis was deceptive. Of course he was. Of course he was. Guys, I got to be honest. I, I'm trying to go further. I, I don't think I can. Let me see if I have one video to play from these storms that we've had the last. Uh, I didn't get the one two days ago, but today was pretty good. Let me see if it popped up yet. It did. It didn't. Man, we had some wicked thunderstorms today. Jesus. It was fun. I guess this is from today. Oh, yeah, it's when I went, I had to go to the store. Eh, wasn't anything spectacular today. I mean, there it was, but not when I was driving. Yeah, it was kind of boring. But it picked, it was up and down all day today. Anybody living in Florida, I guess that's a common thing. Anyway, I'm going to head out. Thank you, moderators and super chatters. Uh, oh, yeah, let me check. I didn't freaking check. Uh, hold on. No. And thank God. Uh, and super chatters, moderators, thank you for helping out tonight. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know, it's Saturday. We'll be back tomorrow night, but I don't know if I'm going to do a day show tomorrow. Maybe just Sunday. I don't know. See how it goes. But uh, thank you very much. And uh, newcomers and veterans, thank you, too, for hanging out. And thank you for subscribing. We've got a nice little kick in subscribers lately. Thanks to Third Phase of Moon. I don't think they put a video out last night, did they? Did they? I didn't think they did. My God, I just did the same thing twice. No, nothing. All right. So uh, thank you. We are Truthology for Ufology. That's for darn sure. We learned that. Early. <laughs> Told you. That's it. We'll be back. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Have a good weekend!
<laughs> oh no. Alien Bless. There's gonna be no apology to nobody. I'm not gonna change. He not gonna change. Everybody gonna stay the same. <laughs> Fuck you, Fology. <laughs>